गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल मॉलिकुलर मिस्ट्रीज होप एवरी वन इज डूइंग फाइन आउट देयर सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले लेट्स गेट इन टू द क्लास Good morning everyone I'm back with one more interesting bread groups video so in the thumbnail itself you got to know this class is all about um the important discussions regarding um, the bread grouping so this kind this might not be useful only for the pg students this could be also useful for the general public because they have to know what is happening inside their bodies right so why they are called uh, four different type of blood groups are present and all okay so without any further delay now let's get into the class so uh, blood groups it's mainly uh, blood groups are the example for the multiple alleles i told you each and every blood group is mainly divided by decided by four different alleles on the chromosomes it could be a it could be b it could be ab and it could be o okay so carl landstrian is a person who observed this blood grouping in humans okay the four phenotypes of blood group is identified due to the antigens a and b see before i tell in detail so antigens and antibodies are present you know antigens are present on the surface of your red blood cells and antibodies are present in the plasma right plasma of your blood so uh, based on that presence of antigens a and antigens b each and every person is blood group is divided okay so let's talk about what is happen in person with blood group a in persons with blood group a they have antigen a present on the round R, uh, rpc and anti b antibody so for that explanation i want to give you no let's talk about blood group a this is your rbc okay this is your they have blood group a have this is antigen a in their blood group of rbc the same time should take the plasma they have antibodies this are the structure of antibodies i will talk that about in immunology okay don't worry these are the antibodies so these are the anti b antibody so you a uh, person can't have antigen a and anti a antibodies because they may end up having clumping reaction so antigen a is present on rpc and anti b antibody is present in the plasma of blood group a hope i'm not confusing you now let's go for blood group b people who have blood group b have This is your RBC. This is your antigen B, and this is your plasma, which contains anti a antibody why i will tell you why they are only anti a antibody and in anti b antibody if anti a is present the person can't survive because the blood itself get ended with clumping and all right so agglutination should never happen in the body so that is why blood transfusions are so important before you go for a surgery before a patient is going for a important surgery first thing they have to know is what is his blood group because during surgery the person loses a lot of blood uh, 
so uh, for that to get recovered they take the blood from the closed ones from their blood uh, relatives that's why they ask for the blood group of the relatives so that they can give the blood for the transfusion why is it so important for the transfusion to happen during surgery the person loses lot of blood so for that to get recovered they will take and that should match with the patient's blood group then only they will accept it okay there are some important roles in the uh, i will let you know in the last of this slide okay there are some basic roles where they have to follow because uh, uh, before transfusion okay so net go for blood group a b so you know that blood group a p is called as universal recipient blood group ap is called the universal recipient they can take the blood from anyone because they doesn't have any antibodies within them right so can say like this is a rbc you have antigen ab present on your bas on your rbc but in plasma there are no antibodies since there are no antibodies they don't react with your transfused blood right the person whoever is having ab blood group they can take from any one because they don't have any antibodies in their plasma for the reaction or the agglutination to happen that is why they are called universal recipient now let's go for blood group o so blood group o are considered to be the universal donors why they are called donors because they are having they are not having any antigens they, they don't have any antigens on their rbc that is why they are ready to accept they are ready to go donate any one like see um, so what happen in blood group o is these are your rbc there are no antigens so as there are no antigens in rbc they can donate to anyone antigen won't react with the antibody because there are no antigens present in their rbc so this is the best example or the uh, this is the best taken for the universal donor this is the main important character of your the o blood group they don't have any antigens and they are perfect for your acceptance by any blood group okay so you have plasma and you have antibodies for it but there are no antigens to react so there is no uh, agglutination reaction happening in the patient because they don't react right so that is how you have to you know uh, first of all you should get the awareness about the blood grouping why uh, only o is preferred in maximum conditions if you come across like what happens is if a person goes through a, a surgery okay they will only search for the people who have uh, the same blood group like they should be first of all uh, uh, they should be blood related persons okay so that it would be uh, easy for uh, transfusion and the second important thing they choose is uh, if it is like if they don't get any uh, thing they will go for the o group mostly positive ones i'll also tell you what are positives and negatives like you you will come across o positive a positive b positive why is it called a positive and why is it called what makes the difference okay so in next slide i will tell you so till now sir you are okay with it right so that's what i want to talk to you in this slide that the ab blood group uh, a blood group has antigen a on rbc and antibody b in the plasma b blood group has antigen b on the rbc and anti a antibody in plasma and that is why you see a if the a people give blood to b people the person won't survive because the b people already got antibodies against a 
in their blood so when a people give their blood it would immediately lead to the clumping and agglutination leading to the death of a person in the same way if you go for the people with a blood group they have antibody b in their plasma anti b antibody immediately reacts with the antigen present on your blood group thus reacting leading to the formation of clumping and agglutination and death of the person so this is how you have to you know this is how what mechanism happens here this is how, okay so blood group don't have any and i told you blood o blood group don't have any antigens a and b and thus they are called they uh, the universal donors and ab group has antigens a and b but they doesn't have any antibodies so they are ready to accept any blood group they are called universal recipients hope your confusion is re uh, reduced as of now okay and how blood groups are tested this is i want to important to give you see when you go and for example i am ta talking about a condition where for example just take me as an example i don't know suppose i don't know have i don't know the what the blood group of mine is okay for example i am going to a hospital and i want to check my blood group so what they do is so imagine i don't know it okay if i go for a blood group uh, if I, i want to know what my blood group is we can do it like uh, we can uh, there are tests available and you have blood kit available so i will tell you what they really do for testing your blood so for example if i am going out and i don't know the blood group is so first they have taken the blood what they do is and this is your imagine this is your slide okay this is your slide so what they have done they have taken two different slides they have to observe the clumping reaction in the blood then only they will get to know the type of blood group okay so for example this is your first sample they have taken four drops of blood here right so what 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 have done this is uh, they have taken the sample of blood in two different slides slide 1 and slide 2 first they have added anti a antibody anti b antibody okay okay see what they have done first of all when anti a antibody is added if the person has got a group in it a group means it have anti b antibody but you are having anti you are adding anti a antibody so the a is finally attacked with your antibody and this leading to clumping formation so if clumping happens in this area like let's take this is a a small a without any confusion in this small a if the people of a group is seen with the clumping which says that they are having the a group if if clumping is observed in this portion the clumping will be like this okay these are the agglutination reactions that happen because a contains rbc uh, antigen a on rbc and antibody b on plasma but you are having adding anti a to it so a is gen is completely uh, agglutinated or clumped with your anti a antibody leading to the clumping reaction so this says that this person's blood group is a if the if in the same way if people are having b blood group this person is having a b blood group and you don't know that the uh, if you want to find out what person's blood group is first you will take the blood and you will add the anti b antibody if the clumping happens why clumping happens clumping happens because the blood this person's blood group of rbc got antibody b sorry antigen b and antibody a 
in their plasma but you are adding anti b antibody which suits this that's why it leading to the clumping clumping leads to the breaking so you can observe the breakage of your cells in these two slides in in these two areas thus these people are a group and these people are b group hope i am not confusing you please go with the topic if clumping happens it says that the antibody a is reacting with antigen a if clumping is happening antibody b is is reacting with antigen b that should never happen during blood transfusion okay so to avoid that only they will get to know the blood group of each and every person in the same way if both you are adding anti gen a and antigen sorry antibody a and anti anti a antibody and anti b antibody both are added to the blood and if you see the clumping happening like it's a breakage happening okay so if breakages breakages are happening okay so that means you have antigens present right then only uh, this these are able to bind right so this is a b group of the unknown people and if you see any no breakage happening here because there is no reaction happening here that says there is no antigens present on this person's blood so that is why it remains as blood only doesn't have any uh, breakage or so no rbc sorry no antigens on rbc that is why there is no reaction happening no clumping so it is leading as a blood so these people are the o group so this is how you decide the person's blood group so this is you already see in the labs right so you can even so this basic knowledge is necessary for your blood testing okay so hope i am not dragging the class much so that is how your blood groups are tested see you in the next class until then stay positive stay healthy and be kind to everyone thank you bye bye